Welcome to an introduction to homeschooling in New Hampshire with Granite State Home Educators. My name is Michelle Lavelle. I'm a co-founder of Granite State Home Educators, and today we're going to talk about how to get started. We're going to do a real concentration on that initial part today. We're going to talk about the overview of the requirements, but really focusing in on the things to get started when you're a brand new homeschooler. So we'll talk more in depth about notification, your choices for a participating agency, the acknowledgement letter, the process of de-schooling, how to find the right fit for your homeschool approach and any resources you use, and building that customized learning plan at the beginning, plugging into community and the different ways Granite State Home Educators can help you in that process. So congratulations! Homeschooling is a great adventure and we're going to help you get that party started. The legal requirements are really very simple. There are three basic components. It's the letter of intent that you file at the very beginning. You have a portfolio that you maintain with a reading list. And at the end of your academic year, you have some kind of year end evaluation. You can find all of that and a lot more details and links on the GraniteStateHomeEducators.org website in the Where to Begin section. And we go through this in great detail in our Intro to Homeschooling video series. And you can find that on our tab also on our website. But for this purpose for today, we're going to concentrate on that letter of intent. So the letter of intent is what you file for your notification and declare yourself as a homeschooler. So we're going to talk here about the when and the what. So you only need to file a letter of intent one time once your child is at least six years old by September 30th of the school year. Uh, so if you have a child who's not yet six by that September 30th date, hold off, don't file anything, just enjoy your time learning with your child uh, or doing whatever it is that you choose to do. But there's no need. In fact, we recommend not to file letter of intent until your child is of school age. Uh, so you can file that at any time, but it's only one time per child, not annually and within five days of beginning your homeschool program. You can file it at any time. It can be in the middle of summer. It can be several weeks into the beginning of the school year for your local district. It can be midway through the year. You have no restrictions on when you can declare as a homeschool family. Your notification must include the child's name, address, birth date, the parents' names, addresses, and daytime phone numbers, as well as the date of your home ed program. It's really that simple. It can be uh, an email. We do recommend sending it by certified mail. That way you have proof that you sent it and proof that your choice of participating agency received this notification. Uh, there is a form on the DOE website. We have a link to that and a sample template on our website in that where to begin section of our website. You, and that really can be the conclusion of everything dealing with your participating agency. You would have to re-notify if you move to a new district or let the, your PA know if you're ending your home ed program prior to your child being 18 years old. But it really is that simple and minimal. So you have a choice of who to work with for your participating agency. You can send your letter of intent to your local SAU office, and it's the district office, not the individual schools, but the SAU office. You can send it to a private school that offers PA services. We have a list of them on our website, and it's up to you. Or you could send it to the New Hampshire Department of Education. Uh, so you have choices. And that is your participating agency. That word participating agency is kind of an umbrella term for whichever of these entities you work with. Your choice can often be determined by the fee because your SAU office and the DOE do not charge a fee. It's free because you're already a taxpayer in the state. Uh, private schools can charge a fee. It's typically maybe $50 per child for a one-time notification or uh, there's a cap on how many they may charge for a full family, but it, it depends, so check with the school. Um, 
some people have privacy concerns because the SAUs will enter the student information into their big database. Private schools don't do that. So it's a way of separating uh, your inf child's information. So that may be a concern to your family totally up to you. Uh, maybe you've had a bad experience with your SAU and you don't want to work with them. That's perfectly fine. You have choices. And typically private schools have a bit more flexibility uh, with what they're willing to work with you for your year end assessment. Uh, you'll see in our other intro to homeschooling videos, we talk about that year end assessment more in depth. Um, but Broadly speaking, you have three choices. You have the standardized test of your choice. You have can work with a teacher of your choice for a year end evaluation, or you can have a mutually agreed upon alternative with your PA. And that's where a private school might be a bit more flexible with what they would accept for that year end assessment. So those that's typically where the choices come down to, but it's up to you. Uh, and it's it a lot of people have no problem working with their SAUs, but some do, so totally work with whoever is the best fit for your family's needs. So once you file your letter of intent and your PA receives it, they have then 14 days to send you an acknowledgement letter. Please save that in a safe place for the entire duration of your home ed program. Um, so it's important to you for you to understand that this is an acknowledgement letter. It is not permission or approval. They are simply confirming that you have notified them of your intent to homeschool. It's that that clear. They can't confirm or deny or ask for more than that. It, they, it's not permission that they can give or withhold. So that's important. Uh, it's also very important that you know that your acknowledgement letter should not be single for a single academic year. It is for the duration of your home ed program, and that is part of that one-time notification. It's not annual. So if you do receive an acknowledgement letter that specifies a single academic year, give them a friendly call. Usually that's all that's necessary to get it corrected. Or there might be some other language in there that says we understand that beginning with this school year, you're homeschooling. So take a close look at the language. But if it's only for a single academic year, uh, give them a friendly little call for them to send you a corrected one. It's important that it's corrected because this acknowledgement letter is your proof that you're fulfilling the compulsory attendance and home education laws. And I reference the statutes there at the bottom so you can see in very clear language what those requirements are and why this is important. We recommend that new families to homeschooling take a little bit of time to de-school. We talk about this more in depth, but it it is summarized as saying it's a shift from that more group learning traditional school environment to a personalized learning environment in homeschooling and it it's it's a definite change it's a it's a change and you may need to give yourself and your child some time for that mindset to happen so it's helpful because it's uh it's a shift for people can be a big change for people, uh, especially because of these COVID changes and remote learning is not at all the same as homeschooling. So take a look at our de-schooling video for some specific suggestions, concrete suggestions for both parents and students for how to use this time to prepare for a, a successful homeschool experience and, and get yourself ready. So we get a lot, a lot of questions about finding the right fit. So um, whether it's, you know, the perfect curriculum or the perfect um, homeschool approach for their child. And I hate to tell you this, but there isn't a single best style or curriculum. There, there just isn't. Homeschooling is a customized learning program. So if you're going to talk to, let's say, 20 different homeschool families, you'll get 20 different answers for what a homeschool program looks like or what's worked well for them. 
Uh, so there, there isn't that magic answer, folks. I'm sorry, but it just doesn't exist. Uh, what's going to be best is going to be what fits your child. And you know your child best. You know what their goals are, what are their needs. You know how they learn. So it, you're, it's a customized program. You're going to need to do some homework to figure it out. And that's okay. We've got tools to help you with that. So take a look at our Granite State Home Educators website. We go into a lot of depth on this in the videos, in the Intro to Homeschooling series videos. You'll see stuff there. And we have some more information to help you through it. So building a customized learning plan for your child is really what homeschooling is all about. It has that flexibility and that is huge. That is a key distinction for a homeschool program. So you can meet your child where his or her needs are at and change things up as needed, whether that means the math curriculum you bought that you were so excited to begin at the beginning of the year after tons and tons of research and it doesn't quite fit as you expected, that's okay. You can change it up. It's all right. And you can follow them as their curiosity and passions emerge and as they find, oh, what about this? What about that? And it leads you through a series of, of investigations and research and curiosity. And it's okay to follow that rabbit hole. It's, it, it's actually a lot of fun. So that flexibility is a hallmark to what a home education program can be. So I hope that helps explain homeschooling is not school at home. It is not the same as remote learning. Parents have that total flexibility to create a customized learning plan for whatever your learning objectives are for the year, whether it's to be able to reintegrate your child into a public school in a year or two, or you know, you, your kid has this totally out of the box approach to what they wanna do when they grow up, or you wanna have an unschooling approach to life learning and everything else and have an integrated process. It's all good, but Homeschooling is not school at home and it's not at all remote learning. So uh, the key difference is families are the ones providing the education. It's not being provided by the public school entities. It's not being provided by an online charter school, although you may choose to use that as part of your program and you certainly can, but you are the ones making all the key decisions, folks. So you get to make it what you want. And it can be a mix of styles and resources and ability levels. We go into this in much more depth in our Intro to Homeschool series part two, and you can find our videos on our website you can also get a sense of the enormous range of resources on our website there, grandestatehomeeducators.org. Take a peek in homeschool methods where we talk about different styles of homeschooling and have some quizzes there to help you identify which might be a good fit for your family, along with curriculum that go with those styles. You can see what might be a good fit. And also under our resources tabs, there's a ton of information for field trips, enrichment classes, and ways to make it all affordable. So we do go through this more in depth in our Intro to Homeschool series part two video. Uh, and you can see all the website, all of those resources with links. So check out those resources for yourself. Building community is super important. Um, and I realize that a lot of new homeschoolers can feel isolated, particularly now, but there are definite ways to plug in and find other homeschoolers that uh, you feel comfortable with. There are groups that are local and regional, as well as statewide. You can find groups that are based on the learning approach, whether it's classical or Montessori or unschooling. There are ways to plug in for both academic and just fun, which you know is just as important these days. You can find groups that are uh, have age groups of kids that have religious focus. And increasingly right now, there are both virtual and in-person opportunities to connect with folks. So take a look at our website. You can also find it under support groups. We publish a lot of these events in our newsletter and on our Facebook group. You will find events and opportunities for 
art shows and picnics and play groups at the local park. Uh, Grand Estate Home Educators hosts periodic college preparatory events online. We, you'll see that. There are meetup groups for board games, play dates, um, bowling and soccer leagues, dances, proms, theater groups, outings for field trips. So there are definite ways to plug in when and how is right for your family. It, it's so these are just it's a whole bunch of opportunities that you can choose from. So you can find these on our website, the newsletter, the Facebook group, but plug in, find a way to connect with people. So Granite State Home Educators offers a lot of different support for homeschoolers. We have uh, an extensive bunch of resources on our website, and we also write unique articles in our blog, uh, either written by our leadership team or by members that have something special to share. So we have things like, you know, how do you switch gears midway through when that math curriculum isn't what you thought it would be? Or what are the best ideas for what are your must have ideas? What advice from veteran homeschoolers? Lots of good bits and information there. So check that out. Uh, Grand State Home Educators also hosts events throughout the year, both in person and online. We've hosted an Ask Me Anything About Homeschooling. We've hosted events with Commissioner Edelblue from the Department of Education. We've also hosted Intro to Homeschooling sessions, both in person and online. So we host these throughout the year. So we try to bring our best information and make it easy for you. Uh, we have a free monthly newsletter. Please sign up at our website. Uh, we often share news and information about homeschool issues that are going on around the state and the country. Because that's important to stay informed. We also have representation on HEAC, the Home Education Advisory Council to the DOE. So definitely uh, we have a voice at that table where we want to represent you, your concerns, and be able to help other key officials in the state. Uh, we have great videos on a lot of different topics. That's been an area of a lot of expansion for us uh, from um, trade-offs between portfolio and testing, scheduling tips, um, the intro to homeschool series, and we're adding to that all the time. We offer a lot of personal support and guidance. Uh, people ask us questions either through email or on Facebook, but we do a lot of that one-to-one, -one, and we offer a lot of different ways to connect into the community. So we have our website, please check it out, bookmark it, you'll reference it often. There's a ton of resources there, so take some time and explore that. We publish our monthly e-newsletter, you can sign up for that on our website too. But that's a great source, it's kind of the best of and highlights and um, great way to summarize what's going on. So check out our monthly e-newsletter. Past editions are also on our website if you want to take a look at that. Uh, we also offer a number of different ways to connect in through Facebook. That's a great way if you're on social media to connect with other people. We have both our main page that's public and we host events through there so you can share them with your friends. And we have a Facebook group. That group currently has over 3,500 members around the state. That's our primary support group for homeschoolers. But we have some specialty groups too. We have the Homeschool Pod Connections group, which is more for families looking for like-minded groups uh, and educators to help form these micro schools and homeschool pods. That's been a big hit lately. We also have been offering a group called Unexpectedly Homeschooling, which is for families who have been working through remote learning, trying to find out what uh, their best options are for reopening and still staying plugged in and having support and enrichment opportunities. So that, that might be a good fit for you. We have Granite State Home Educators Marketplace, which is a forum for people to buy, sell, and trade homeschool resources. Great way to plug in and pick up materials on uh, in, inexpensively. And we also have Families Helping Families, which is for folks who have children with special education needs, regardless of what educational format they're plugging in for their kids. So whether it's public school, charter schools, private schools, or home education, we try to be a, a 
helping resource there in our Families Helping Families group. You can also find a lot of great resources that we've created on our YouTube channel. Lots of videos there from the Intro to Homeschool series to uh, scheduling tips, portfolios, special education topics, as well as past HEAC meetings. So lots of resources there too. So just want to leave you with a bit of encouragement. You know your child best. Be patient with yourself. You'll you'll figure it out and you don't have to have it all figured out for day one. It, you take some time. Uh, it's a learning curve for the kids and for us as their parents. We'll figure it out together. It's OK. Uh, you, you can get it. It'll be fine. And you're not alone. We've got that huge group of 3,500 people you can plug into, plus all these other smaller specialized groups so you can find the community that's right for you. And we're here to help you every step of the way. You can email us. You can message us. We're still here. We're here to help you. So finally, if you have any more questions, you can catch us at that email on our Facebook page at groups and, of course, through our website. But uh, you can do this. And congratulations. I hope you have a great homeschool experience and plug in and reach out to us anytime you need. Thanks for tuning in.